Hello, good people of YouTube. Mountbatten here, and today we are going over five tech lines you should. The cat's making noise. Five tech lines you should avoid. By this, I mean these are five lines I would avoid grinding early on. Like if you're just starting out or if you're looking for lines to grind, these would be ones I would definitely grind at last after I have some experience because they are quite frustrating. Now, I'm not under the impression that, you know, any line is perfect, right? But there are lines that you should definitely grind first. They're easier to get a hold of. They teach you the basics of the game a lot better. And then there are lines that just aren't good or they have very few high spots in them and it's a real frustrating endeavor to get through and these are my top five that i would you know not grind right away so if you do find yourself enjoying this video at any point in it make sure you do drop a like leave a comment subscribe to the channel helps on the youtube side of things appeasing our algorithm overlords right and also if you have an interest in firearms or firearms history just check out yesterday's video where we go over my g3 style rifle again if you have an interest in that please check that out link will be in here or in the description down below but anyway let's go ahead and get on into it coming Coming in at number five, we have the Japanese Heavy Cruisers. Oh, what a line that has not aged very well. Now, Heavy Cruisers typically play, in most cases, you know, at longer ranges. They have larger guns, more HP, and more armor than Light Cruisers, especially if you have a Light Cruiser and a Heavy Cruiser line. That's typically the two key differences. However, the Japanese Heavy Cruisers are so old they've been power crept so much that their own light cruiser line has more range and in some cases the light cruisers have more hp than the heavy cruisers because reasons like literally the yodo has more hp and more main battery gun range than the zal does that's um that's backwards for sure so not only has just up and down the line the japanese light cruisers not aged well but man just the way they play is not very comfortable in today's meta while sure you know six seven years ago when the japanese cruisers were released when the game launched they were the long range cru cruiser class but you have to play them very uncomfortably close in today's world of warships and these are cruisers that up and down the line they don't have the highest levels of survivability as i'm sure most of you battleship mains know out there there's nothing more tasty to shoot at on the map than a zal right and again that's not just like a zal thing where the zal has very wonky armor you can sit it all the living crap out of it it's up and down the lines like that and their range hasn't been updated so you have to play them uncomfortably close and you always risk the odd salvo that hits you to you know take off half of your hp from a single shell right and on top of that as well the line it's got its high points right like i still think the zal's pretty good the abuki is very comfortable tier 9 and the furry tacos are really good tier 5 but the other ships really aren't that great so it's a it's a bumpy road to get to the zal then even when you get to the zal while i still think it's a good ship it's certainly not uh in its prime anymore to say the least it did get the new sur submarine surveillance consumable and i know some players are saying well why would you give a zal that it sits at the back of the map well back of the map for zal is like you know 12 kilometers from the front line because of its 15 kilometer main battery gun range right so it's kind of oddly a pretty solid cruiser to give it to but yeah the japanese cruisers they it, they have not aged well you got quite a few bumps to get through in the line and even when you do get to the zal it's unfortunately not that great anymore and that's why it's at number five because again the zal the ibuki and the furitaka are all really solid cruisers in my opinion they just you know it's a bit of a learning cur curve to play them well in today's meta. All right, going on down to number four, we have another line of heavy cruisers, this time the German heavies. And man, 
The German heavy cruiser line, well, I mean, they, it's heavy cruisers and light cruisers, a mix of both, right? Uh, the German cruisers are another line that has not aged well at all. The German cruisers, especially at mid tiers, so like tier 5 to tier 6, 7, they are just made out of explodium. They're very, very easy to citadel. They don't have a lot of armor because, again, you know, you're mostly dealing with light cruisers around there. And, yeah, man, back in the day, I remember when I went through this line back in, like, 2018, 2019, the ships were made out of Explodium. And now today, I mean, think about all the new larger caliber battleship, battleships that have been added in, all the super, well, not super cruisers, but, like, the large cruisers, you know, like, all the Azumas, the Gears, the Condes, the, um... Sorry, not the Conde, the uh, the other, the you know, the French large cruiser, right? All those cruisers are 305, 310 millimeter guns that you have to deal with now when you're a tier 7 ship that are perfect for just absolutely obliterating, you know, these mid-tier cruisers, right? You have to deal with all that, submarines and CVs now, and yeah, the German cruisers aren't doing that well, and very much like the... Japanese cruisers, when you do get to the heavier set cruisers in the line because they're so old and their models are so old, the geometry is a little funky on them to where when you get to the hipper, you know, a heavy cruiser that has decent armor, you get hit in the rudder and then you get citadeled, right? So, yeah, then the German HE, you know, it's got good pins, but low HE alpha, and then, you know, the, the AP does work pretty well, and you can catch the broadsides of the enemy ships, but, you know, you gotta play in an aggressive nature to where you can get close enough to make use of that, and again, with the line made out of ships that are pretty easy to just, you know, explode on sight, it's, um, not, not that great, but the Hindenburg is a really good cruiser in my opinion it's a cruiser that has stood the test of time it's still good at doing what it what it does you know sitting at medium to long range and just burning things down with its hg and then nuking the crap out of them at closer range with its ap when you can move in and of course the cruisers do get the hydroacoustic search which are very 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 useful tools for dealing with uh today's submarines and the hindenburg line did just get the ASW aircraft now to where you don't have to go sail over them in your hipper anymore and try to depth charge a submarine so you got the hydro you got the ASW plane so that, that is a bit of a relief when you get to the Hindenburg uh the the rune is still a okay-ish cruiser in today's world of warships the, the rest of the line though it's a real pain to get through them at, at mid-tier again especially with all of the uh new features and mechanics and gimmicks that again all these mid-tier ships have to deal with nowadays so again a line that hasn't aged fantastically well but you still have a pretty solid tier 10 at the top of again a line i would definitely put off grinding until later once you got your feet wet and understand the game's mechanics pretty darn well and speaking of germans that brings us down to number three which is the mainline german battleships and it really hurts me to put these guys on this list, but yeah, they have not aged well. If you do want a brawling experience, a much better class, a much better class, much better line to go for is the German Battle Cruiser line. Those guys are just so hyped up on meth and secondaries that they still work in today's meta. But the main line, you can't really brawl with them anymore. And I'm saying this because. Of course, there's a whole, whole lot of videos and guides out there talking about how the German battleships are brawlers. And yes, you know, years ago when they were introduced into the game, they were the best brawlers. And in some ways, when they can get into the right situations, they are. But rather than being played as brawlers, you really play them as a main gun ships now. And yet again, you know, surprise, the tier 10 is pretty solid. But the, the journey there is not that, not that great. Because with the Preussen being added in and the GK being removed from the tier 10 slot, you know, the, Prussian ha the Preussen has those eight uh, 457 mil uh, millimeter guns with a quick reload time. And, of course, you can make that work at tier 10. You know, a 20 second reload on eight 18 inch guns, that's going to put in some work either way. But rather than, you know, having ships that have larger caliber guns with good reload times, but a small number of them up and down the line, you don't really get that. You get a bunch of ships with decent sized guns for their tier, with the exception of like the Nisenau and the Bayern at tier 6. And then, you know, the uh, Bismarck has 15 inch at tier 8. The FDG has 16 inch one way or another at tier 9. And, you know, they have eight guns a piece, you know, 
two two guns per turret so the dispersion ain't that great grand you can't get the reload down pretty fast on them so you can kind of make it up for it in some ways but then you know again the bismarck and the fdg are a pretty rough spot in today's uh, meta today's very long range very campery meta they can work it's just not a whole lot of fun in my opinion and if you try to play them as brawlers you're really not going to have a lot of fun unless you get you know a game that devolves into a state at which you can't exploit that in which at that point yeah you will have fun but that's going to be very few and far between matches with today's world of warships right they do get hydro you know from the bismarck on up so that's a very useful tool again with trying to deal with submarines but the armor scheme for these ships too is they're very chunky at range and if you try to play them as a main battery uh, battleship which is what they're you know kind of not kind of they are better for that today than trying to play them as secondary battleships uh, you're going to get chunked at range and if you want to play a main battery you know build battleship you get the japanese battleships over there which do a, a much better job at that today than the german battleships and again if you want to play a brawling line go play the german battle cruisers so they should be passed over until you're down to your last handful of battleship lines to grind in my opinion yes they still have their moments i mean of course this is me saying this guys right i i love these ships i love running them with secondary builds but i'm not going to sit here and pretend like you know they work with that build and that play style in today's what warships every match right it can happen you just got the right situation and definitely not a line i would want to try and grind through in today's meta um again with you know submarines and you know super ships ha having to deal with those from tier 9 on up not really looking forward to playing you know against a bunch of super ships and the fdg right 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 so yeah definitely hold off grinding these bad boys until you're down to your, your last like three or four or really three battleship lines that you got to grind right all right going down to number two we have a real stinker of a line until you get to the end and that is the dutch cruisers the dutch cruisers man 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 um these were just painful to play through when we went through them um back upon their release now when you get to the Johan de Witt, it's a, it gets a lot better, and the Golden Lose, again, is pretty solid too. But the painful experience of playing the mid tier Dutch cruisers still just lives rent free inside my head. Uh, they don't have a lot of armor, the guns aren't that great, uh, they give up a lot, again, to get, you know, what, what they do get, right? And it's just miserable at mid tier. Uh, you know, when you introduce a gimmick like airstrikes, you gotta lose something, right? The ability to just spawn a bunch of planes in the air and be able to drop them upon the enemy team's head, you gotta pay for it. And, well, unfortunately, these guys seem to have gotten it in terms of the um, main gun accuracy and the armor. And, yeah, 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 yeah. Even with, like, the Golden Lion and the Johan de Witt, there's still moments at which I just go, oh, come on, really? Really? Like, the guns are going to perform like this when I get this close? Like, the 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 Golden Line, which is the Tier 10, still has absolutely mediocre accuracy, which is unfortunate because the AP is actually pretty good when you can get it to hit. Like, when you're at, like, 8 kilometers and less, like, uh, the point at which if you miss those shots at Tier 10, RNG just hates you, right? You know, when you can't get that close, the guns really pack a punch. So, you know, if the guns are just a little bit more accurate you know they, they, it'd be something really special but then it's just like ah just such a shotgun right they can offer the, those airstrikes you know and they're incredibly incredibly susceptible to he spam they are big huge squishy targets that any battleship's gonna love to shoot at you because they're probably gonna pin you given your armor scheme and such but golly i wanted these ships to be great and unfortunately they're not it's a pain to get through the mid-tier ships you're going to be, be blowing up quite a lot and yeah just no rush to get to these guys you know they're a pretty unique line you know i like that it's you, you get basically a tier 10 sharn horse right at the end that's pretty cool but man it's a miserable grind to get here but the most miserable grind is awarded awarded to none other than the pasta boys the italian battleships trying to balance a line that has airstrikes is one thing trying to balance large caliber sap is apparently a nigh impossible task because good lord 
do these things suck. The Italian battleships are straight, straight misery until the Lepanto. Even with the Lepanto, which is the Tier 9, it has its moments too. And the only reason the Lepanto is any good is because you finally get a large number of decent caliber guns with the Lepanto, with its 12 15-inch guns at Tier 9. Before that, like, oh man, the Tier 8, the, the Ven Veneto, is just pain. Like, it, it's a Roma, but there's no HE, but you got the Roma accuracy, you got the SAP, but you only have 8 guns. I'm um, sorry, only have 9 guns, and the, the accuracy is just miserable. And they have buffed them, they have been buffing them slowly over the years, but the, the grind is just still so miserable. I've played the mid-tier ship since, you know, they've all gotten their little, you know, little, little hugs from Wargaming's balancing department. They're still pretty miserable to play, in my opinion, at least. And I would not, would not want to be stuck grinding through the Italian battleships again. You know, gun to my head, if I had to reset the Italian battleship line and play through it again, there's a fair chance I, I just won't, because I, I, I do not like the mid-tier ships that much, right? And, you know, again, SAP is really powerful. I understand why you can't give the ships, you know, accurate guns where you can constantly dunk on the enemy team. But, man, it's just pure pain to play. Like, tier 5 to 7 battleships, you know, they're not the most exciting ships. But, you know, a couple of lines have some pretty good ones like the Queen Elizabeth, the Sinop. And I, I do like the Nisa now, despite what I just said about the, uh, the German battleships. The Nisa now is still a pretty fun ship, but nothing in the Italian line gets good until the Lepanto. And even then, the Lepanto is just kind of workable, right? It's not good. The Colombo is pretty good after her most recent buffs. But, yeah, no, no, just just hold off on the Italian battleship line. I know that the sap is intriguing, and yes, if you get blessed with RNG, you can easily cleave, like, a half of a, of a lightly armored battle cruiser's HP off in a single salvo. But again, that's mostly with the Columbo with her 16 15-inch guns. That's why her, she's so good, right? But yeah, no, just, just hold off on grinding these bad boys down. I would, of course, since it's number one, right, grind the German battleships before these things, but... Yeah, no, just save yourself the torment and wait till you really know what you're doing before you touch the Italian battleships. But anyway, guys, that's my two cents on my top five tech lines you should avoid. At least put off grinding until you must grind them, right? Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. And what five lines would you put off grinding until the last moment in the comments down below? Let me know all that jazz. Hope you guys enjoyed. Have a wonderful Monday, wonderful rest of your week. I hope to catch you guys in the next one.